Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman, Lois, and the Arrowverse. Today we're going to be talking about an interview that the showrunner of Superman, Lois, did with the Flash podcast. All links will be in the description below to the Flash podcast's interview with Todd Helbing, the showrunner. I will be doing another video on some of the other quotes that the Flash podcast and Andy was able to get with Todd because I feel like there is so much in the article that it deserves two videos and there is a lot of stuff going on in this first bit and we're going over like three to four questions that are definitely something that you guys are not going to want to miss out on so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. Okay so this is all coming from the Flash Podcast. Again, links in the description below, you can go read it. But we're going to be going over a couple of burning questions that the Flash Podcast was able to ask. And I have to say this on a personal note, I really love these interviews that Andy and his team do because they get into such detail unlike any of the other publications out there because they are not afraid to ask spoilery questions and that's great for us because we can dive into what exactly happened in Superman Lois's season 2 finale with this interview. Okay, so the first question is this. So we get the big confirmation that Superman Lois takes place on another Earth. And I know a lot of Arrowverse fans will have questions about this, so can you talk about what led to this decision? Todd Helbing replies, Originally, if you look at the original script, I think it's online somewhere, there are a lot of references to Crisis with Clark and his family because of it. We went from having one infant to two teenage boys, and that was a huge part of it. But it just felt like it was opening a can of worms and required so much explanation to someone like, let's say, my mum, a new audience member, that wasn't going to play in the same way that we originally intended. So Greg Belanti and I, along with the CW Warner Bros in DC, we all just started to put all of those references out. There was even, in episode 2, there was a picture of Kara with the two of them at the barn from the crossovers. They just slowly, for whatever reason, got pulled out. Then I had a conversation with DC in season 1 about this. There was desire to put our own stamp on the Superman mythology and just to have it be able to function on its own. But the more we got through season 1 and the end of season 2, it's just felt more honest to not have it be on the same planet. I think when all the other shows were on at the same time, it was easier to do references like The Flash in Central City and Supergirl in National City, but for our show, like our big bads became so huge and there's no way like having two worlds merging but everyone won't be there. Unfortunately now that these other shows are no longer going to be on air, it just didn't feel like it was going to be rewarding. I'm sure there's going to be some fans out there that are upset, and I totally understand, but I think the decision was just made to keep our show on a different planet and do the best that we can. So, this is obviously going to give the show a lot of flack with fans, and now this is me personally speaking, because Arrowverse fans have been led to believe that this is the Superman that we knew previously from Supergirl and from the different crossovers and him showing up in various episodes in the past in the Arrowverse. However, with the confirmation in Superman Lois's season 2 finale that yes, it's in the Arrowverse, but yes, we are not in fact on Earth Prime, we're on another Earth out there and they don't currently know what number Earth it is, so it's just like a mysterious Earth out there, and that is just another version of Superman that we are following, is a very controversial decision, and I know that they know it's controversial. And what is interesting to me in what Todd Helbing actually says is, he basically talks about how these other shows are no longer going to be on air, and so he didn't think it was going to be rewarding, and so that is one of the reasons why they did this. And I think this actually tracks, because in season 1, when Diggle was first on the show, he actually referenced fighting alongside this version of Superman, and he mentioned Oliver, he mentioned other heroes, but in this finale, we just got told that Superman is the only superhero on this Earth, which is obviously quite a shock, because that's not what we thought it was, and, you know, they were just in other cities, and they were busy with their own big bads, but no, with this, that means that they've taken the decision in season 2 to actually retcon that 
And Superman and Lois is known for its retcons, just look at Lucy Lane, but obviously now it explains much more as to why these characters are different from, say, the characters that we've seen on Supergirl, like General Lane we've seen in the past on Supergirl. He was completely different from this current version as well, but that's because they are doppelgangers from another Earth. And I understand their explanation, but I feel like the fact that now he is saying it's because these other shows aren't going to be on the air, and the fact that I think he's anticipating The Flash is going to end in the next couple of seasons, he doesn't see it as being worth it to properly connect it, considering these shows are going away. And I think, honestly, Todd Helbing and some of these other showrunners probably got the heads up by the CW a while back that Batwoman and Legends would be going away, because now if you look at it, we've only got the Flash that is currently set on Earth Prime, Superman Lois is now not set on Earth Prime, Stargirl's not set on Earth Prime, and that is pretty much it in regards to our DC TV shows. Obviously we have Justice U coming, but now it begs the question, is Justice U going to be set on Superman's Earth, because we know there's a Diggle on this Earth, and they are now claiming that the version of Diggle we saw in the finale and that we saw in season 1 is in fact the Diggle of this Earth and not Diggle of Earth Prime and he has never had all the interactions that he had on Arrow although he looks exactly the same as our Diggle who we just saw on The Flash and so we thought that they timed it on purpose but it turns out no, this is supposed to be a different Diggle so it does feel like a big big cop out However, I understand their choices to try and make Superman and Lois different. However, I don't think it's actually that wise to neglect something as big as the Arrowverse, considering there is so many fans out there, and it's all interconnected, and by disconnecting it on purpose, I don't think that puts you in a very good position. But let's move on to the next question. This is again from the Flash Podcast. They say, do you have an idea in your head what this world Supergirl is like, whether she would be played by Melissa Benoist or someone else? Although we obviously would love to see Melissa, do you sort of know what and where she would be in this world? So I'm very pleased that Andy actually asked this question because obviously as Supergirl fans we've been questioning this whole time, why are we seeing these different versions of these characters that we've seen on Supergirl? Why hasn't Supergirl been referenced considering that she's such a big part of Superman's life normally? especially the version of Supergirl that we know, well Todd Helbing replies to that question like this. He says, yeah, it would not be the Supergirl from the Arrowverse. It would be our own version so we could invent <clears throat> a new backstory for her. The same way that we did with Lucy, General Lane and John Diggle, they may be their doppelganger and they may look exactly the same, but it would be a completely different story. And so this is very interesting. So replying to this Supergirl question, it seems we have absolute confirmation that if they were to ever bring in Supergirl to Superman Lois, it would not be Melissa. There's a chance that Melissa could come back, but she would play another version of her character. It wouldn't be the Supergirl that we know. It would be the Supergirl of Superman Lois's Earth. Whatever that Earth may be, she would have a new backstory and I think that is their main reason for everything. They want full control of their story. They don't want to be held back by any of the bounds that have been set up in the past in the Arrowverse. So they're kind of throwing that away and starting afresh. And I understand the allure to that. However, like I said before, I don't think it's good to just throw everything away. However, it would be pretty cool now that Melissa is busy with other shows and other jobs now that Supergirl is finished. We know that she's probably not going to return as Supergirl, at least for a long time. If the Arrowverse is still a thing in the future, who knows considering The Flash is the only Arrowverse Earth Prime set show as of right now. I'm really hoping for more shows. I'm just putting it out there, fingers crossed, the Arrowverse continues. So it would actually be cool to see someone else play Supergirl and get a different version of Supergirl in the Arrowverse. I would actually be down for that, just like I'm down for Supergirl and the DCEU. I'm really looking forward to that, and so it would definitely be exciting to see how this version of Supergirl from this Earth would be compared to the normal version of Supergirl that we are all so used to. So what do you guys think about that? That is obviously a big step, and there's always the chance that there would be a flash of this Earth, a green arrow of this Earth. They would be completely different, and now, with Superman Lois doing this, there is always the chance that these characters could show up. Again, it could be the original actors, it could be new actors, and that's just how it goes. So, 
I'm looking forward to seeing any potential characters showing up in different forms but I'm really waiting for the day that we're going to get a proper crossover with the rest of the Arrowverse and maybe seeing those two Supermans collide. But that kind of leads me on to my next question that we're going to be breaking down from the Flash podcast. They ask, despite this reveal, fans always hope for a crossover between Superman and the Flash, especially before the latter ends its run. What can you speak about that? Todd says the pandemic sort of made it virtually impossible doing that but like I say this all the time I love Grant Gustin clearly I'm connected to all the cast there and Eric Wallace is a friend of mine so that would be a lot of fun so it's just sort of depends on if there is a real desire from everybody to do it but those conversations are initiated by people a lot higher than me so we'll see what happens I'm certainly not opposed to have a flash on our show So it's good that he's not completely cutting off the Arrowverse and saying, nope, we are just Superman Lois, you can't come on our show. And obviously they have the pandemic explanation for everything as to why they can't do certain things that has been the excuse for everything, like how there are no big crossovers coming this year or next year. We'll have to wait and see for the future. Again, the Arrowverse may be dead at this point, if I'm being completely honest, even though it's very sad to say that. But with this, it kind of puts a little bit of a nail in the coffin, like a tiny nail. But obviously, as Todd was a extra runner of The Flash, as he stated, he is connected to that cast and that crew. And he would love Grant Gustin to be on the show and to actually cross over. And as The Flash podcast says, everyone has been hoping for a Superman Lois and The Flash crossover. We were really rooting for it in Armageddon. However, that didn't happen. And it kind of raises the question, why wasn't any Superman Lois character there? Maybe by that point they had already decided that this was going to be set on another Earth and they wouldn't jeopardize their future plans by including a character or two in that crossover. And so I don't honestly know if a crossover is going to happen before The Flash eventually ends. And at this point we don't know when The Flash is ending, but people were just presuming, considering we're going into Season 9 next year, that we're in the last couple of years at least. So he says he's not opposed to having the Flash on their show. However, it doesn't seem that he is like super into it and he's not thinking about it right now. That's just what I can infer from the way that he's speaking. So that about does it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.